Hi, I'm Jamie. This is Ted Dodge Garage, and this is a Chrysler Alternator. The Chrysler charging system is a constant source of trouble and annoyance for owners of these vehicles. In fact, on many popular online forums, the only solution ever offered is to replace it with a one-wire alternator. But in truth, this system is very simple and easy to diagnose. The charging system consists of two primary components, the alternator, and the voltage regulator, which comes in two types. This one, used up until 1969, and this one, used from 1970 way into the 1980s. Another important component of the Chrysler charging system is the amp gauge, or ammeter. More on that in a moment. In addition to the two types of regulator, there are, in fact, two, or even more, types of alternator but the functionality and wiring is essentially the same. They have two brushes. One will be used for a positive connection and one for a negative connection. In the case of the earlier style regulator, the negative connection will be grounded. Let's assume that your engine is running, your belt is definitely turning your alternator, but your system is not charging. I'll tell you right now, the most likely cause is the voltage regulator. But before you go ahead and replace it, there are some basic tests to do to verify that. Whether you're having an issue with a vehicle you already own or with a vehicle you've just purchased that's been sitting, in any case, the newest vehicle with one of these systems fitted is about 30 plus years old. So the first thing I would check is to make sure you're getting voltage from your key to the charging system circuit. To do this test, You'll either need a test light or ideally a digital voltmeter as it can be helpful for diagnosing voltage drop. But the fundamentals are going to be the same. You need to make sure with your key in the on position you have power on this side of the early style voltage regulator or on this pin of the later voltage regulator. One common issue I've seen is a poor connection right in that connector. In the case of the early style charging system, the only other thing required in this circuit for the alternator to charge is a return to ground through this brush. In many cases, newer style alternators installed on these vehicles will actually be a later alternator with the second brush grounded. This is another important area to check, especially if you've recently changed your alternator and it still doesn't work. In the case of the later style regulator, the ground is what is used to regulate the voltage coming from the alternator. The ground for this circuit is right here. So one very common issue is corrosion or rust behind this voltage regulator or loose bolts, which cause a lack of ground and an inability to charge. If you have access to my favorite tool, the power probe, this can be extremely useful for verifying all of this. You can even touch it right to the case of the regulator and make sure it's grounded. A test light can also do this. In the case of the later electronic style voltage regulator, there's one further test you can do if you have a multimeter like this. The knob set to the 20k ohm range. You can remove the connector from this regulator and place your probes on these two pins. You should see somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.75. However, I've never really had the greatest luck with this test, and every meter tends to give a slightly different reading. Let's say you've checked your key voltage to the regulator and it's fine, but your system still isn't charging. The next thing to check would be the voltage on the output lug here. If it matches battery voltage, then you're probably okay. But if you see something in the range of 15 plus volts here, but 12 or so at your battery, your issue may well be in this charge output circuit. If you're working on a classic era Mopar equipped with one of these charging systems, there are a couple different pieces that can cause issues. The big one is this. The firewall connector carries all power for the entire car from the charging system and from the battery. And the issue there is it's really not up to the task. It's very common to remove one of these connectors and find corrosion, melted wires, and evidence of burning. 
While these connectors were give or take adequate when these cars were new, as the connection degrades over the years, it gets worse and worse. And this is amplified if you add any aftermarket electrical equipment and place extra strain on the charging system. If you spend any time at all reading around on the various Mopar enthusiast forums, you will learn that many, many people have had this same problem. And the prescribed fix for decades has been to add a bypass wire around this block. That's a great idea, but I suggest you take it a step further. Before we get to that, though, there's another important component here to discuss. Every classic era Mopar had one, the amp gauge, or ammeter. The purpose of this gauge is to check the output of your charging system and verify that the battery is not being discharged. The unfortunate side effect of that is all loads to the car must run through this gauge, which is an extremely limiting factor. In some cases, with no starts, dead lights, nothing working at all, this gauge is the culprit. I've seen it several times. Steps to diagnose that issue would require an entire separate video. But suffice to say, despite being a simple system, Chrysler baked in a good bit of complexity. The too long didn't read version of all of this is, if you've got charge voltage here, but it's not making it to here, this connector could well be your issue. And the first thing you should do is disconnect it and with the battery disconnected, take a wire brush, clean it out, spray it with some cleaner, apply some dielectric grease to every terminal in there, and reconnect it. But whether that solves your issue or not, or perhaps you're not even having charging system issues, I recommend you add a shunt wire just like this. It goes directly from alternator output to battery positive. That way, no matter what's going on here, as long as the regulator and its circuits are working, it will charge the battery. This has an added benefit of sharing the load that goes through the bulkhead connector and the ammeter. So if you're not having issues now, you may not later. If you verified that there is voltage to your regulator and the connection from the alternator to the battery seems to be good, then it is most likely your voltage regulator that has failed. I have a saying for Chrysler vehicles, when they're not charging, it's never the alternator, but occasionally it is. One final note on these voltage regulators, made using this artist's rendering of a voltage regulator, since somehow, despite having eight Chrysler products on the property right now, I don't have any of these laying around, and the only one is bolted into a van buried under eight inches of snow. One issue I've seen recently, specifically on 70s and 80s Dodge trucks, is an overcharging situation. In this situation with the engine running at idle, you'll tend to see somewhere around regular charging voltage, 13.5 to 14.5. But when the engine is revved, the gauge in the dash goes all the way to full charge, and the voltage at the battery will then be somewhere in the neighborhood of 17 to 18 volts. Light bulbs will start popping, stereos will start going into safety mode, all sorts of bad things happen. Essentially, what's happening in this situation is the voltage regulator is cranking the alternator to full chooch. In attempting to diagnose this problem, I became convinced it was an issue with reproduction voltage regulators, as a trusty old unit pulled off of a random truck parked out back for three years worked every time. What it came down to, I believe, was a slightly different pin design here, causing a bad connection and a poor voltage reading inside the regulator. The fix turned out to be to replace the triangular two-pin connector here, and all was well. Did I say eight Mopars? It's ten. If you've gone through all of these diagnostic steps, or maybe even thrown some parts at your vehicle, and you still can't get it to charge, well, there's always this solution. Interesting note. Despite being known as the engineering company in the classic vehicle era, Chrysler never did move away from this alternator and separate regulator system, as GM did in the 70s and Ford did starting in, I don't know, the late 80s or 90s, it's impossible to tell. In fact, all they did was move the voltage regulator in here. Hopefully you found some of this information helpful. I'm sure I'm forgetting something very important. If you have any follow-up questions or are having issues diagnosing your charging system, 
don't hesitate to ask in the comments. And if you found this information at all useful, feel free to hit the little like button and, I don't know, subscribe? Ah, I forgot another one. It's 11. Thanks for watching.